Hey y'all, welcome back into this beautiful message straight from the heart of God. Um, I wanted to talk to you all today about being the standard and not settling. Because I think that is one of the things that many people, once they get saved, they don't realize that God actually wants to make them the standard. The Lord actually wants to make you the person where people who are in the world who have not yet come to Christ yet, he wants them to look at you and him working through you as a vessel and say, this is an example of what being a child of God looks like. This is, this is what God does for his children. He redeems, he saves, he brings people uh, back to Christ in a way where his light is literally shining through them. God wants to make you the standard. But what happens is a lot of times when we get saved and we're new in Christ, or maybe, you know, like you, you've been walking with the Lord for a while, but you just haven't really come to the full understanding of what it is that God has for you, what it is that he wants for you and the standard that, that he wants you to rise to. Oftentimes we settle in life. We settle for the things that we think we should have and we think we're deserving of versus the things that God says we should have. And even though we're not, we may not be deserving of it because we are flawed and we're human. God says that he redeems. God says that he went to the cross so that you can live life and have it more abundantly. Even though we may not be by worldly standards deserving of it or even by God's standards, right? But that's what love does. Love is something, especially when you're coming from the definitions in the book of Corinthians, love is something that is uh, patient. It is kind, right? It is something that um, God displays an absolute perfection and we can't in our flawedness display the love of God towards ourself and the perfection that God looks looks at us. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So what I mean by that is God is a standard for you and his standard is set so that you don't settle to the things that the children of the world settle for. So that means that you're not supposed to be settling in your relationships. You're not supposed to be settling for certain things and settling to be around certain people. You're not supposed to be settling in the area of your finances. I talk about relationships, finances, and health all the time. You're not supposed to be settling in the area of your health, not just physical health, but mental health, emotional health, and spiritual health. You're not supposed to be settling in these areas because God wants the best for you in these areas. And when we look at ourselves and we accept things that are less than God's best, it's saying that we don't believe that God wants the best for us. Also, on top of that, it's allowing, it's not allowing God to set us, up this, set us as a standard and be a great example to those who are still in the world. Because when they look at you, they need to see Christ in you. They need to see what is capable for them through God moving through you. But if they look at you and they see you settling in multiple areas in your life across the board, that's not revealing the glory of God. I wanna take you to Matthew chapter five, verse 14 through 16. It says, you are, and this is Jesus speaking, I'm reading from the Common English Bible version. It says, you are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can, cannot be hidden. It can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. It's saying, because you're the light of the world, you're not supposed to be hidden under a basket. You're not supposed to be hidden under certain things, right? God wants to put you in a place where he's showing you off to other people. You are the standard so that they can look at you and say, that's the God I want to serve. I want to serve their God. It's the same thing Ruth said when Naomi said, you know, you should go back to, you know, your practices in Moab. I'm going to go back over here. Ruth said, no, your God's going to be my God. We're going to have the same God. She looked at uh, Naomi and she looked at the, the God she served and she looked at the life she was leading. She looked at her humility. She looked at her faith, the faith that she had, that there was something still more for her, right? Even though Na Naomi was thinking, okay, there's no, I'm too old to get married. Or I'm too old. She still had faith that God had something in store for her in the future. So Ruth looked at that and she said, your God is going to meet, be my God. God wants people who are who have gone astray, who does not know Christ yet, to look at you and say, I see Christ being displayed in them and I want that for myself. I want redemption for myself. I want full restoration in the area of my health, my finances, and my relationships. And we know that these areas in people's life are in shambles, even if it doesn't look like it on the outside because they don't have Jesus. They don't have Jesus. And when you don't have Christ, there's a certain level of brokenness that comes with that. But God redeems all. He doesn't just want to make you the standard. He doesn't just want to have a beautiful, he doesn't just want you to have a beautiful life. He wants you to be an example for others. So it says, neither do you put a lamp and put, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, 
Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand and it shines on all who are in the house. This is what God wants for you. He wants you to shine on all who is in the house, on all who he wants to come into, I believe it's called the sheep bone, on all who he wants to come back, right? Um, and it says, in the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your father who is in heaven. I think that people mistake um, being the standard and people mistake um, being, you know, um, someone who's an example for others as someone who is boastful or someone who's not humble. But there's a way to inspire others. There's a way to influence others. There's a way to bring others to Christ without being boastful. There's a humble way to do it. We see this happen in the book of Esther where Esther with the most humility went and actually influenced King Xerxes to save all of the Jews, right? We see this happen in Joseph. He had such a humble spirit, but he was able to be right underneath Pharaoh and bring his family into a place within Egypt at the time where they were able to be fed, right? And they were able to have safety. We see this happen many times with David. There's a, there's a place in God where you can get to, to where he will put you as someone who is an example, as someone who is setting a standard for others, but you're also very humble. You're also very humble with it. And that, that's a maturing process. Like I was saying, many times when we come to Christ and we're new in our walk with God, or maybe we've been walking with God for a while and we just haven't gone that deep into the Lord, um, we reach a place where we we don't believe that God wants to um, do more for us, so we settle. We settle and we think that anything outside of what we've been settling for is wanting too much or being too boastful. What God is saying, no, he wants to make you the standard. He doesn't want you to settle for certain things because you settling for certain things is not allowing God to use you as a vessel to be an example to others of what's possible for them. How can God show others what's possible for them through his children who are walking with him if you're settling, if you're settling? So I know this is going to be a word of like just a powerful, impactful word that's going to hit a lot of you um, who have been settling in certain areas of your life. God is saying he has more for you. He has more for you. And I want to ask you, are you settling or are you allowing God to make you the standard? Are you allowing God to make you the standard? Do not let the enemy... Uh, place fear in you or doubt in you that God wants more more for you because he'll he'll um, put the children of the world in front of you and make you think that if you have more that if God gives you more that you're going to turn out like them but when you have the spirit of God in you you're built different you're built different you've been shaped and molded differently than those of the world you've, just, you've been shaped and molded by humility by the spirit of God and so when God gives you more you will not turn out like the children of the world because you still have the spirit of God in you that keeps you grounded grounded on uh, biblical principles so are you settling for are you settling in life are you going to allow God to lift you up to be the standard and be an example for other people who he wants to bring into the body of Christ. And some of these people he wants you to be an example for, they're already in the body of Christ. They just don't know that God has more for them, but he may want to use you as an example. This is, doesn't have to be strangers. This can be people in your family. God wants to make you the example for people who are in your family so they can see, okay, if God can do this for them and they're in my family, then I know it's possible for me. There are many people who are tied to you. There are many people who are tied to you. I really want you to let that seep in. So I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> Lord, we always gather here before you um, and we come into agreement on the basis of Amos chapter three, verse three. You said, can two walk together except they be agreed? We are, we are coming together in agreement before you, Lord God. And we lift these prayers and, and their hearts up to the courts of heaven. And I ask, Lord God, that you give them direction in the name of Jesus. I ask that you strengthen their heart. I ask that you drive out any fear, Lord God, and replace it with the peace of God. Like I always say, and your word says, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you drive out any fear and give them the same faith and, uh, and confidence and courage that Caleb and Joshua had as they marched and went into the promised land and they took the land in the name of Jesus. I ask that you uh, drive out any fear and give them an immeasurable faith. We know that your word says faith is a gift. I ask that you give them the gift of faith to continue going. 
Lord God, I ask that you give them the strength. I ask that you give them a sound mind to shut out the enemy, to shut the door to the enemy. When he, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord God, I ask that you give them the strength to, uh, to allow you to work through them, to hold up a standard against him. In the name of Jesus, you know all that it is that you have for them. I ask that even if you have to, Lord, even if you, if you have to, and they ask you that you reveal to them a snippet of what it is you have to them. Give them a revelation, Lord God. Give them a vision. Give them a word of knowledge. Knowledge. Give them something to reveal to them. Hey, you have more for them. Show them a snippet of what it is that you have for them, Lord God, so that they can hold on to it, so that, that, that their faith can be built up in the name of Jesus. I ask that you give them the strength to keep going. Let any voice of confusion, let any doubt, Lord God, be driven out by the fire of your Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord. We all love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I love you all <laughs> with the heart of God. Um, and I know that this prayer has blessed many of you. I know that this word ha has blessed many of you and it's exactly what you've been praying for. It's exactly what's been going on in your heart because the Lord doesn't ever put anything on my heart to share with you all unless it is something that his children need to hear within that moment. So let me know below if this was a word of confirmation for you, if this spoke directly to you and what you're going through right now. It's always encouraging for me to see that because it's always a reminder that the Lord is constantly moving outside of his word, right? The word, like we have scripture, but the Lord is still speaking to this day. The Lord, there are people who think that the Lord does not speak anymore, but the Lord is still speaking till this day. This is why we know in his word, he says he's going to return. He's still speaking in this day, till this day. <laughs> so I love you all. I always want to extend the opportunity for those who have, who have not put seed in the ground to put seed in the ground and sow into this word. I'm a firm believer of, sow of sowing and reaping. When I hear a word that speaks directly to me, I sow into it because I want to plant seed into it so that God can have something to multiply with. So for those of you who the Lord has placed on your heart to sow into this word, I invite you to do that. The link is down below for you to sow or if you just want to give. If, you don't, if you're not looking to God for a harvest, for something specific in your life, and you just want to give, that is below as well. Um, for those of you who are seeking godly mentorship, I do like to always extend the invitation for y'all to join the Promise Land Mentorship. It is a 12-month journey. It's on demand and it's absolutely beautiful. I say it all the time because everyone who goes through it and they complete the entire thing, there's nothing but wonderful testimonies to follow. And not, I'm going to let you know right now, I don't share this with many people, but not everyone completes it. Not everyone completes it. And it's because it's, it's a maturing journey. It's a maturing journey. When the Lord is maturing you, it's not a one and done, right? It's not a quick process. It's something that takes time, and this is why it's 12 months. Um, but yes, if you are interested in that, the Lord has placed that on your heart, I invite you to click the link below and listen to the description of everything that we go through to see if it's really for you. So I love you all. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Make sure that the notification bell is turned on so that you're not missing anything. Also, make sure you share this word because I know that there are many people that need to hear this. This It's incredibly urgent too. Many people who need to hear this that is outside of you because they've been settled, that are outside of you <laughs> because they've been settling in life. I know I was at a point in my life where I was settling in life and it took me listening to certain messages. It took me getting into the word to see, wait a second, God has more for me. This is not like a life of a, a life of just uh settling in a life of not going for god's best the i'm gonna <laughs> this word is going on longer than what i hope but um i'm gonna share something with you the opposite of god's best um it, it's just a breeding ground for the enemy to play in your life it's a breeding ground for the enemy to play in your life um and i'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> I, I have a whole i can create a whole other word on that but um it says the word of god says an idle mind is the devil's playground and so we're not occupying our time, we're not occupying our mind with the word of God and what he has for us, which is always going to be his best, then our mind is idle. Then our mind is just sitting. Our mind is just settling. Another way to say an idle mind is you're just actually settling in life. Um, and an idle mind is the devil's playground. It's a breeding ground for the devil to come into your life, send people into your life and just play around. And we don't want that because we're children of God and we're diligent. So I love you all. I'll leave you with that. And I'll talk with you in the next message.